I'm Anthony Yates. I'm a lecturer in mathematics at Durham University. And in this podcast, I'm going to tell you about iterative methods for solving equations. So the kind of equations we're interested in are uh, ones you might write as f of x equals 0 for some function f. And we want to find those values of x that satisfy this equation. Now, you might well know that for most possible uh, choices of function that you could come up with, there's no direct algebraic way of um, finding the solution exactly. And, and instead, what we have to do is use a numerical method to get an approximation of the answer. Um, and even if there is a direct solution, for example, the equation x squared minus 2 equals 0. Uh, well, we know that this has two solutions, x star. I'm going to call my solutions x star. Uh, we know it has two solutions, plus or minus square root of 2. Uh, but it may be that, maybe for some engineering or physical application, we need to know a numerical value in decimals for, this, uh, for the square root of 2. And so we still will have to resort to a numerical method. So I'm going to talk in particular about this example of finding the square root of 2. Uh, we're just going to look at the positive square root. And I'm going to talk about a kind of method called an iterative method, uh, where the basic idea is instead of going directly to a solution, what you do is you take an initial guess. Our initial guess might be, uh, we'll call it x naught. Uh, well, what would be a good guess? Uh, we know the square root of 2 is bigger than 1. Uh, we know it's less than 2, so let's make it 1.5. Okay? And what we do is we then generate uh, a sequence of better guesses, we hope, uh, using some sort of iteration function, which we call g, or I'll call g. So we plug our initial guess into the function g, and this gives us our next guess, x1, then we plug that into the function g, gives us our next guess, x2. And what we hope is that this uh, process of approximations will get better and better, and it will converge to the solution we're looking for. And we can just keep going until we get the accuracy that we want. Now, if this is going to work, uh, we can't just use any function g. Um, and one thing, one property this function g needs to have is that if you, um, as we get closer and closer to the answer, uh, the guesses need to get, need to converge together to that answer. Uh, so that means uh, that once we're near to the answer, we need x to hardly change from one guess uh, to the next. And uh, if we're exactly at the solution, we need that g of x star is equal to x star itself. So there's no point us starting out with a function g that doesn't have this property for the solution we're looking for. So now we're going to look at uh, some examples of how we might find this square root of 2 using such an iterative technique. And we need to come up with an iteration function g uh, that satisfies g of x star equals x star, where x star is the solution we're looking for. So we're going to look at three examples. The first one I'm going to call method 1. How can I make a function? Uh, so remember that we, what we're trying to solve is the equation x squared minus 2 equals 0. So x star has to satisfy this equation. So we could make a g that equals x star at x star by adding x star to each side of this equation. So if I add x star to each side, then x star plus x star squared minus 2 equals x star. And you can see that I can make a suitable function g uh, just by taking 
g of x to be this left-hand side, x squared plus x minus 2. And it will satisfy this property. So that seemed quite easy so far. So let's see what happens when we actually try and use this to calculate our sequence of guesses. So remember our first guess was x naught equals 1.5. So I'm going to take my calculator, just an ordinary calculator. We don't have anything with these graphical calculators. No need for that. And we will calculate 1.5 squared plus 1.5 minus 2. And we get an answer of 1.75. So that tells us that x1, which is g of x0, for this function g, comes out to be 1.75. I can then calculate x2 as g of x1. So I have to do uh, 1.75 uh, squared 1.75 squared plus 1.75 minus 2, 2.8125. And then if I do it again, x3 is going to be g of x2. I take my previous answer, I square it, I add it on again, and I subtract 2, and I get 8.72, etc. And there's a bit of a problem here. I seem to be getting further away from the answer I'm looking for, which I know is somewhere between 1 and 2. And uh, in fact, this method isn't working. It's diverging. Uh, so this method 1 basically doesn't work. So even though the g of x satisfies this formula here, it doesn't work. OK, well, we're not defeated that easily. Let's think of a new uh, method. Uh, so what if, um, instead of uh, adding on x star to each side here, I just move one of the x stars, uh, or I move the 2 over to the other side, so I have x star squared equals 2, right, follows from here. And then I divide through by x star. And again, I have an equation of x star equals something. So this something I can use as an iteration function g. 2 over x. So let's put this in x0 equals 1.5. Now, I don't need a calculator this time. Uh, 2 divided by 1.5 gives me 4 thirds. So if I want to write 4 thirds in a decimal, then it's 1 with uh, 3 recurring. If I put 4 thirds in here, then it's going to come out to be 3 over 2, which is 1.5 again. But we've got back to where we started here. Uh, so we know that when we do x3, we're going to do the, end up back at 4 thirds. So what's happened here is that we've ended up in a sort of infinite loop. And uh, it's not getting any closer to the answer either. So it sort of fails for a, essentially a different reason than the previous time. We've ended up in a loop. Uh, but the method is still no good. We're still not finding our required uh, approximation. So this is kind of showing that it, it, it's not good enough just to take any function g that satisfies this equation. We've got to somehow uh, be a bit careful, a bit clever in what we choose. And I'm going to present you now a method 3. And this method 3, um, I know because I've, I've prepared that this is going to work. So what I'm going to do is uh, add on x star squared to each side of the first equation here. So I get 2x star squared 
equals 2 plus x star squared. So I, my rearrangement is getting more and more complicated each time. And uh, then I can rearrange that uh, by dividing through so that I have an x star left on the left-hand side and a 2x star in the denominator here. And then my g of x function this time is going to be this. Um, so if you think about it, you can rewrite this as uh, 1 over x plus x over 2. Okay? So this is yet another function that satisfies my required property. And I'm going to put this in my calculator and calculate x1. I need to do 1 divided by uh, 1.5 and then add on 1.5 divided by 2 and I get 1.416 and 6 recurring. So now I'm going to put it in again and I get 1.414 one, five, six, eight, and that's all that fits on my calculator. So I'll put on x3 now, finally. I find 1.414, Now you can see that these answers are getting closer and closer together. Uh, in fact, this last one has only changed in the sixth decimal place. And in fact, if I use my calculator's inbuilt square root function, uh, then this answer agrees exactly with what comes up on the screen. So you can see that this method is working uh, a lot better than the others. Uh, and so this would be uh, our method of choice, uh, at least out of the ones we've seen so far. So in the second part of this podcast, I, I want to ask the question uh, that mathematicians would ask, which is, why does this method work and these other two methods don't?